just a bit about Kirk Cousins. Earlier, he has agreed that he would play under the franchise tag again if necessary. Uh, but this question, will the 49ers or perhaps even the Browns make a serious play for Kirk Cousins? Well, Wendy, Adam mentioned that the Washington will use the franchise tag on Kirk Cousins. which Detroit will draft one of the top running backs this year, given the year they just had. You know, I think they will. I think it's very strong. In the OC, John Morton takes over for Chan Gailey, who retired after the season. He's a 13-year NFL coach, having spent the last two seasons with the New Orleans Saints as a receivers coach. Because here's a look at the Jets' offense, or would be, or might be, or could be. Uh, you tell me. I'll let you two take over and go through the different scenarios, because there are many. Let's start right here. Adam just teed it up for us. It's quarterback. It's Ryan Fitzpatrick. He is not under contract. Jets marriage, though, is, is that's over, done. Right? I, I mean, I, you, we, I, I don't, that, we don't need a question mark. I don't there, think there's you know? any I question mean, there. The other question is sitting there right there at Clady, too, because a big cap number in his yep. situation, whether they're going to tackle. So this, everybody wants to just look at the quarterback spot there. But the reality is there's a lot of holes here on the offensive side of the football. They've really got to address during this offseason. Yep. Uh, we talked about John Lynch reporting for the office. These guys better be in there, too. <laughs> there's there's plenty of work to be done with the draft approaching quickly. Uh, listen, so is NFL Live. We're getting ready for that pretty quickly, too, and I believe Yes, look. Yes, they are. I wasn't sure. I'm happy about that. What's the latest with Hard Knocks? Just say appointment TV. Hard Knocks is much like Rex Ryan. will be appointment TV this Sunday. But just a reminder that the NFL is a bunch of Christ Saints. So that'd be really interesting. Sean Payton, a compelling coach, and Andrew Luck. So if your number gets called and you're one of those teams, suit up. Say, it's happening. A lot of TV coming your way. All right. Uh, listen, when you win the Super Bowl, there's a payout. When you lose, there's also... Uh, some money. What's the difference between the two? Yeah, these two teams are competing right now this weekend to see who can win. The loser, quote unquote, of the two games will walk away per player active roster $129,000. But if you win the Super Bowl, you'll walk out with $183,000. And remember this, coaches get money, the equipment, you know, equipment guys get money. It's a big deal for everybody in that organization. It's sort of like uh, one day of insiders for you. So uh, you, you know how Ooh. that works. Yeah. Look, he's, you just saw our top 10. Uh, what's your reaction? Agree, disagree? How do we do? I mean, I think it's a pretty decent list. I don't understand how the Riggins run is number nine. Ooh, you Absolutely. Okay. That thing is a, now listen, heroic play, Tyree catch, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. No, no. Fourth and one, it's all the line. You're down and you blow through folks. On your way to the MVP, that's got to be the number one. Here's the thing about the, the actual number one play was it was a pretty good offensive line play from the Giants. Keep Patriots at bay, free up Eli to make that throw, but Rigo at, at number one. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff, speaking of great plays, we want to show you this one. It's high school basketball. An hour right here on SportsCenter. We've got our, our picks for the best Super Bowl plays in history coming up, and I'm sure you'll take no issue with them. Along with plenty of Falcons Patriots coverage, including Kyle Shanahan's missed plays playbook. Carelessness, our experts will weigh in, but we're going to start about three and a half hours north of the site of Super Bowl. Biggest storylines as we head into Sunday, and we'll start with number five. What you got, Phil? This is also an addition of not overthinking things, Ellen. Okay. This is big picture now, the Super Bowl. We're getting close to it, just a handful of days away. How did the Patriots slow down Julio Jones? He wasn't 100% in the NFC Championship game, and all he did was nine catches, 180 yards, and it applies to both offenses. The Patriots have this sort of three-headed attack, like Garrett Blunt, Deion Lewis, and also James White. They can each kind to do a little both of them especially we saw people saying over the last couple of Joe Montana sit down great but it's Tom Brady now Tom Brady that's five Sunday. five rings yeah. one for the thumb that right there exactly. says it all and the Falcons pass rush if you're going to slow down Tom Brady we've seen him in two Super Bowl losses be impact season kind of neutralized Vaughn Miller during their matchup with the Broncos this year that right there will be his test again this Sunday against Beasley and then finally Bring it on home here, a chess match. On the right side, Kyle Shanahan, the red-hot offensive coordinator and soon-to-be 49ers head coach. On this side, it's the bearded defensive wonder. It's Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator for the Patriots. Literally, that, You know, and it will help your chances, Kyle. That, that would certainly that help. That would certainly yes. help. Field Yates with his top storylines heading into Sunday Super Bowl 51. Tackle Marvin Wilson. He's going to make his announcement on our ESPNU signing day special, but who you think are the top teams that are vying for his services? I look at Oklahoma, Florida State, Ohio State. Can you give me maybe three guys that no one's looking for, three prospects that you're going to keep your eye out on tomorrow? Well, three uncommitted. One to remember. Uh, also a great thing to remember from last night, and it happened in Boston. Staff Sergeant Matthew Knoll of the United States Air Force National Guard returning home after a seven-month deployment overseas and his family. That does it for me.
Thanks to Jeff Saturday and Mark Dominic for kind of breaking down some of the best plays in Super Bowl history. That was certainly fun. Legs on his perspective in the NBA. I'm going to get out of here and make some room for David and Carrie coast to coast. They've got the latest on reinforcements possibly for LeBron on the way. That's next right here on ESPN. Welcome back, Antonieta Collins with you. Tonight, one of the Giants in sports broadcasting, Brett Musburger will call his final game as a play-by-play -play announcer for ESPN. It was 48 years ago, two days before Super Bowl III, a young Musburger was with a group of reporters when Joe Namath was lounging poolside and made his iconic guarantee that the Jets would beat the Colts. That young reporter would become an icon himself. Jeremy Schapp looks back at a legendary career. Best. We don't quite have that environment, but we'll we'll try to follow suit. He's Kevin. I'm Nicole. Much more from Fog Allen coming up. And like Nicole said, crashing the party like a pair of games we had no intention no. of showing you tonight. Till they were so good we had no choice but to like they're good. All right, star time. And first of all, I would like to take a star away from the person who decided to have Super Bowl Media Day and then make the players available again every other day. It's like it's supply and demand. It's simple here. But I digress because if that were not actually the case, that terrible idea wasn't actually happening, we wouldn't get this much Martellus Bennett, my star of the night, who really is simply doing what we all wish we could. Dinosaurs, space booty, and the best thing to say something is with a swear word. This is Bennett's first Super Bowl. It's in his hometown, and that is a dude who is not stressed out at all. Here's more good news. Players will be made available to the media again tomorrow for a bonus, bonus, bonus media day. Martellus, we are all ears. America, your star, next. America's star, and I like your style, America. John Gillen, Syracuse, 43 <laughs> points, nine threes, two in a row. There's another very tall man in this room, and that says something because Kev's not short. <laughs> SVP coming your way on ESPN in just a few. team doesn't have the ball they can't score no one knows that better than these two the Patriots and Falcons tied for the fewest turnovers in the NFL this season with 11 each teams winning the turnover margin in Super Bowls hassle mm -hmm. are 37 and 4 hashtag I love my stats turnover battles are extremely important it is a fact that if you have the ball and you don't turn it over mm -hmm. You're not going to score. If, if, if you turn it over, though, you throw a pick six or a scoop and scurry, then you've got trouble. These two teams, they don't want trouble on Sunday. Steve Levy doesn't either. He joins us now on SportsCenter. Let's talk about this guy. 22-year-old Matthew Fitzpatrick rolled into Dubai, ranked 140th in the world, after racking up $103,667 in earnings this season. That is exactly $103,667 more than his playing partner has made in that time, Tiger Woods. Fitzpatrick paired with the 41-year-old today for the very first time, saying afterwards, I'm flattered to play with him, but never imagined I'd beat him by eight shots. Fitzpatrick currently tied for 13th. Tiger tied for... Let's just try this whole thing again tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic to watch as well, Lisa, because every time Bill Belichick has been in a Super Bowl, the game has been decided by four or fewer points. It's always close. True story. There are four Super Bowl wins coming by a combined 13 points. And you know who likes that? That guy. Our Sal Pal with Robert Kraft in his first TV one-on-one -on -one all week and the first time we're hearing from the Patriots owner since his comments on Commissioner Roger Goodell. That Excellent. we know, yeah. right? Um, here's a fun story. It's a story time. Cozy up by the fire, everybody. Okay. Uh, so Matty Ice, Matt Ryan, called Matty Ice for a while. Yes. Little known fact, which my husband just told me, they were teammates, uh, he's been called Matty Ice since he was a kid because he loved Natty wrapping ice? Oh. <laughs> yeah. vanilla ice. So wrapping he's been vanilla called ice. So that's what Matty okay. Ice since he was a kid. Huh. But, like, it's been lost, and everybody thinks, oh, he's got ice in his veins. Right. He's playing so well the last few years. Matty Ice, no. Vanilla Ice Ice Baby. That's your story time with your Lisa story. Kearney. Uh, the Thanks Rockets blew out. a huge lead. We got that coming. Vanilla Ice rap. I mean, who doesn't love it when a grown man in khakis tries to dance? All it took was National Fax Machine Day for Jim Harbaugh to 
Bust a Move, Usher style. Now, one and Harbaugh met at an event for the former First Lady Michelle Obama just last month. The two hit it off so well that not only were their dance moves shared, Harbaugh made Usher one of Michigan's honorary captains for 2017. Mr. Khaki and his moves, my star of the night, Kevin Starr, and yours, America, coming your way. In a it was sort of obvious. Tara Vanderveer, how could you not? Super Bowl halftime show. We all remember what happened the last time it took place in Houston. The phrase wardrobe malfunction was born. Thanks to Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Well, tomorrow night, Lady Gaga will own the halftime stage. The league reportedly has asked her not to get political, but you can bet she will have a million reasons to do what she wants because she was born this way and will indeed get the applause, applause. We will all be watching. So will Josina Anderson's special guest. I'm with our NBA analyst, Brad Doherty, who just happens to be the defending champs. I'm talking, of course, about the Cleveland Cavaliers. And as you know, Brad, when you watch this team, sometimes you look at that offense and you're like, oh, my goodness, yeah. they are explosive. And then sometimes you look at them and you're like, wait, is this the same team? They look boring. <laughs> They're standing around, especially Kyrie Irving. Let's focus in on his play of late. Is it consistent enough? in a positive way. Uh, I do believe with them, and they're awesome. You're standing around watching. You stand like, and watch because oh, the guy's oh, great. Yeah, I want to see that good. too. That Kyrie is awesome. <laughs> uh, Brad Doherty, awesome. Cleveland Knicks tonight, 8:30 Eastern, ABC, NBA primetime. We are live, and you know what, Jay? Between the two of us, we have been at ESPN for. I'm not going to count on fingers. 38 <laughs> years. That's wow. right. 14 for you. Yeah. 24 for me. Man. But get this, Chris Berman, he's been at ESPN since the beginning of ESPN, which was exactly 38 years ago. I love the clock. <laughs> it's Remember so good. clocks, people? It's so good. <laughs> Look, Chris is on the Mount Rushmore of sportscasters, no doubt about it. We all owe Chris a huge debt of gratitude. As he transitions into his new role here at ESPN, Chris Berman, a.k.a. Boomer, a.k.a. the Swami, yes. with one last two-minute drill. This brand new live edition of Sports Center. Coach K, he's back. Get it? Duke's man in charge returns to the sidelines after a disappointing month without him. We're going to bring you to Durham live. Plus, I'm thinking of an NBA team that starts with W on a huge streak. It's not the Warriors. Why you should be paying closer attention to the Wizards. And it all comes down to the food. I was just talking about the food. When making Super Bowl picks, who's going to win it all based on the best eats? Live in Houston. Sports Center continues next on this Saturday. Well, home cooking sure agrees with the Washington Wizards tonight. They look to win at the Verizon Center for the 16th straight time. Our Brad Doherty will stop by to talk about whether we should be talking about the Wizards much more. Stay tuned. Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Super Bowl Sunday. The three days in the calendar year where I give you permission to go off the wagon, as I like to say, and eat to your heart's content, and then eat some more. It's what I do. Not sure if Hannah Storm does, but I know food has to be on our mind on the day before the big game. Elko and the future of the New York Islanders in Brooklyn is uncertain right now. The move from Long Island two years ago to Brooklyn has not been a bonanza. Officials at Barclays Arena said this week they're not counting on any revenue from this team beyond the 2018-2019 season. Well, upon hearing that, the governor of Connecticut and mayor of Hartford offered a solution for the Islanders. Move to Hartford. Remember, that city lost its NHL franchise back in 1997 when the Whalers moved south to become the Carolina Hurricanes. So don't hold. Get some inside info from our Pac-12 reporter, Chantel Jennings, who joins us live from Eugene. Dylan Brooks, Chantel, took over Friday night against Arizona State, scoring 27 points, hitting the go-ahead three for the Ducks. What has he told you about his development this season? Well, right, I mean, and the Wildcats could set up a tiebreaker with a win tonight. So who will be the catalyst for Arizona? I think it'll be true. You see this guy who's been 10, but you know what, Chantel? How do the Bruins continue their team's momentum and don't look ahead to next week's big game against Oregon? I think that's the fear with any team, especially any young team. You have teach for Eastern on ESPN. What a good one. Thank you so much, Chantel. Good seeing you. Good seeing you guys. Thanks.